Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Josh Peak, and I happen to have Josh Treadaway again. Say hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. So, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, buddy. Yeah. Uh, We had a Christmas and a New Year happen. Um, Pretty fun stuff. And uh, just a small thing I'm going to jump right into. Uh, Maybe some of you guys know the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, I know you've seen it. I've seen it. You're wearing the Boba Fett shirt. I got Boba Fett behind me. We're we're a little we're a little bit of a fan. A little bit. Just 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 the small fair. So I must have gotten asked a thousand times. Uh, so why Boba Fett? So I kind of want to throw that question to you. Why Boba Fett? Why does why do we gravitate towards him as a character up to this point? Because for a lot of people, they don't know anything about Boba Fett. And they're like, why why are you so into Boba Fett? I know why I am, but I kind of I kind of want to know your opinion. Well, I mean, I'm sure most likely a lot of people feel the same way, but honestly, it's because he didn't have to walk a line between dark and light. I mean, it's same reason why we like Ahsoka. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, you, you 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 know, he's he's about the money, man. Yeah, he's you got know, a job I mean, to but, do, and he's really good at doing it. And he's really good at it. He's so good that even Vader's like, listen, I he he's no good to me. Like <laughs> Vader's like. <laughs> I do like. I know we go way back, but please don't kill this guy. I'm trying to, I really want to get him alive. <laughs> right. I mean, so I mean, that's just. I mean, his character is just. You're breaking so, up. I don't know dynamic. Yeah. Even though he, even though he only plays a small part in all the trilogies, he he was memorable. I mean, like you you don't forget Boba Fett. Right. So for me, I think one of the coolest things was. I don't even remember who it was, but someone that I was in middle school with started reading the books and they read the book where Boba Fett fought his way out of the Sarlacc pit. And he was like, he was, he was telling me as he's reading it, he goes, did you know that Boba Fett got out of there and that he was this really, really good Jedi. And that he, I mean, this good bounty hunter and that, you know, a lot of Jedi feared him. And then he was the one that told me even before the movies come out, cause you know, we're old men. Um, he, he was the one that told me, he said, yeah. And he said, uh, you know, the Jedi has killed his father. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, he goes, he's, he's been in odds with the Jedi forever. And, and this guy's just a total badass. And I was like, oh, okay. And the more he talked about it, the more I was like, I want to see more Boba Fett. But then I went over to my buddy, Ron White, who did all my tattoos, went over to his house one time and they had a, a video game where you get to play as Boba Fett. And so he had decided I don't even know if it was the main character or just a side character, but he decided he's going to play the rest of the game as Boba Fett. And he's went around destroying everything. And I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. But as you, to me, as you go through the Star Wars story, kind of like when Dolores said, pick out a lightsaber. It's one of those moments you go, am I a Jedi? I mean, do, do I relate more with Jedi? Do I relate more with Han Solo? Like you said, you related more to Han Solo. Or do I relate more to this guy who's a bounty hunter who just rolls in kind of Clint Eastwood style or more like, uh, you know, Chuck Norris style and just obliterates everything. And I was like, yeah. I kind of dig the, the bounty hunter. Cause I mean, here you got everybody in the galaxy, good and light that are afraid of him. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. I mean, you know, he's just, just awesome. Plus it sort of kins itself to me to, I know this is going to be a weird stretch, but to Hawkeye, he's just a dude with a bow and arrow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and knee rockets. Knee rockets, you know. Boba Fett's just a dude with a cool outfit and knee rockets. <laughs> and a giant cannon on his back. But I mean, you only get to see him shoot that once. But still, there is that possibility. I mean, and then, of course, the to me, the show didn't let up. The, the show gave me what I was expecting. Um because we talked about, I think you and I talked about the fact that most people want to go, okay, so show me what happened. Like literally from Return of the Jedi. Right. Show me what happened. How did you get to the story in Mandalorian? How did you get, what happened to your character? How, how did you get out of the Starlight Pit? And they showed you a bit of that, which was good. I mean, it was, to me, it was necessary for a lot of people to visually like digest that part. But even the parts that you and I knew, it was it was still nice to see the visual part of him fighting his way out of the Sarlacc pit. One hundred percent, I agree with that, and I and I and I and I, I actually that's one of my favorite parts of the whole first episode. Um, again, 
I'm just like I did with one division and with Hawkeye. I've had a few friends of me talk about that was just not what I expected because right. we, we live in this day and age where Netflix, you know, can release a whole series. And so you can binge watch the whole thing and you get to see the growth of the characters and the, the rise of the series itself to it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's ultimate point. I know that there is going to be that moment when I just jump out of my seat. Yeah. Yeah. And because I can't wait. For I'm actually excited for the fact that I can't watch it right now. Like I'm, I'm enjoying the wait, the waiting, the anticipation of the, having to wait a week and the yeah, big reveal. I mean, I, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe it's just because we're older and we're used to, you know, old TV where, you know, you had to wait a week to get an episode, but, yeah. but I, enjoy, I enjoy that anticipation. I sort of talked about that with Dolores uh, a couple weeks ago. We did a podcast together, and I was like, we were talking about the fact that we're watching Yellowstone, and Yellowstone comes out once a week, and it's like that anticipation of going, you know, I binge-watched all these past episodes, and now I have to wait, and it's just eating me alive because I can't wait for the next one. And that excitement, in a way, I think helps with the success of the show because I then agree. people are talking about it and people are anxious about it. And, like, I love the Netflix program of just putting it all out there and going, here you go. I mean, I love being able to binge watch an entire season because it's almost like, especially if it's a 10 episode hour long show, you're getting a 10 hour movie. I mean, right? How, how cool is that? But also it hurts it in a way because then you don't have that buzz. You don't have that conversation of going, oh, man, I can't wait for this week. We get to find out how they get out of the situation. You know what I mean? It. To, okay, so <laughs> Thomas, uh, there's this guy that we went to high school with, and his name's Thomas. Anyway, the, he he posts a lot of stuff about you guys got to watch this, you guys got to watch this, you guys, gotta... and he posts a lot of things that I really enjoy. And one of the things he posted was Lost in Space came out with their final season, mm -hmm. and I mean hours after it came out, he's like, "Oh my God, best." best ending to a show ever best show ever best sci-fi ever and i was like okay i guess i gotta make time for to watch this <laughs> and he wasn't wrong i mean on every front but it just come out and i was now, like were you, watching, were you watching the show is before that or yeah yeah okay okay <laughs> well see i grew up you know back when we had our black and white tv watching lost in space and my wife didn't and my wife was going so what's the big deal about lost in space i said it's kind of like gilligan's island in space yeah, I mean, that's a good way to describe it, without a doubt. They're always trapped somewhere. They're always trying to figure it out. There's a kid. There's a robot. You know, the robot's danger, danger, Will Robinson, and flapping his alarms around. And you got somebody smart there, and you got somebody that's kind of up to no good once in a while. This is kind of like Gilligan's Island in space. But that show translated to this show, the new show, and the robot is dangerous. The robot is a threat. The robot is is one of those things that you don't know if it's on your side or the, or the other side for a large part of the show. And they did a really good job of sort of showing all of the characters, their own backstory in a way and giving them their own uh, reason for being there, their own motivation and everything. And the special effects were amazing. And the final season, Netflix must've just signed them a blank check and went, go hog wild, do everything, do it all. And they did. And he wasn't wrong. But I think that the fact that they were able to just put it out hurt the show because I don't think a lot of people watched it. Not as many people should has watched it. They should watch it. They should watch it. So, yeah. Anyway, back to the book of Boba Fett. <clears throat> I'm watching the show and I'm thinking, God, these guys look good for their age. And I was like, wait a second. How old are they? I looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tamara Morrison, is he just turned 60, apparently. Um, Ming-Na Wei is 58 i was like holy crap jessica beale great for 58 jessica beale's in it and she's 60 something i was like holy crap like these, all these characters look so good for their age but one of the things that i thought of is this is a genius idea for an action show because these characters wear helmets so as soon as the helmet's on you could have a stunt actor do all the crazy you know, like she's jumping off buildings and swinging around poles off of buildings and, and doing crazy martial arts stuff that I'm sure a 58 year old would be like, I mean, I can do it. But this yep. 20 something year old looks way better doing it with the helmet on. And she kind of looks like me with the helmet. Just 
you go do that thing. Go kick somebody's butt. <laughs> the, the, the funny thing is I was sitting there watching it and I'm like, I really wish now that I had learned parkour because maybe I could have been an extra in the, you know, <laughs> Boba Fett. It's, you, you definitely had to do some parkour. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's lots of jumping over stuff and jumping off of buildings and, you know, gravity defying tricks. And it's like, whoa, that's really, that's really impressive. Um, so I like, I liked a lot of things about the show. I like the fact that uh, you do see that background of him. The, they don't really explain the fact that the waves on the planet are, is Camino and where he started. They don't really explain that part. I know it. You know it. Star Wars fans knows it. But the casual watcher is going to be like, I don't get it. What's the ocean part? And then you see the part where him as a kid is holding his dad's, basically oh, his head his in head the helmet. Yeah. They yeah. don't show the head, but you know it's the head in the helmet. and my first thought looking at the helmet was it kind of looks like Boca Tan's helmet in a way. A little bit. Yeah. It's that same bluish tone and yeah, in the same, the same bluish color. Spart- Spartan lines yeah. in the front. And I'm like, that looks really similar to Boca Tan's helmet. That was my first thought when I watched it this time. And I was like, I don't know I've ever thought that before. This is okay, cool. But again, the casual watcher is going to look at that and go, who's the kid? What's with the helmet? And I'm like, they didn't really explain that part. I mean, so my thought is also they showed you that because they want you to see where you come from. It is for people like you and I, but then for casual watchers to ask Star Wars fans, what is what is that? Like, I think they did it on purpose so that the conversation then starts if they're interested because they'll ask a Star Wars fan. I don't get it. What was the helmet thing? And we can explain. Oh, well, that's, you know, basically. Right, Mace Windu cut his dad's head off, and that's why you're going to see at some point Boba Fett's going to be at odds with the Jedi, probably Luke Skywalker, and we know how this goes. I mean, maybe well, they... already, well he was he was introduced in the Mandalorian, yeah, re re, re re reintroduced in the Mandalorian, such as so was Luke Skywalker. So yes, yeah, so I think there's going to be a point where maybe in the next series of Mandalorian we're going to have Luke and Boba back together again at yeah. at. At each other. Yeah. And we know from the movies that Luke makes it. <laughs> I'm just saying Luke makes it. Uh, not so sure about Boba Fett, but hey, man, who knows? I mean, things happen, also, right? There's also, there's also a growth period. I mean, you can already see, like, you know, he wants to he wants to rule, but he wants to rule fairly. I mean, yeah, that know, doesn't yeah. go over so well on his first day at the job. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So, spoiler alert. Sorry, guys, if you haven't watched it already. It's been out of almost a week now, so you should have, especially if you're a fan. I know you have. But, yeah, it does not go very well. No. So right off the bat, I mean, we are going to spoil it. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it and then come back here. Just click pause, go watch it and come back. Anyway, and you're back. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> right, nice. off the, the right, there. right off the bat, um, there is a, a, a flashback sequence where he is inside of a healing chamber uh, we've seen Luke Skywalker in this. We've seen Darth Vader yeah, in this. Yeah. And it's repairing the damage that's been done to him um, over the years, which is good because you don't need to have them all scarred up in every episode. That's a lot of extra work for the people to to constantly put scars on him. And it's extra time and effort and energy needed that you don't need to have. And this sort of moves that story along and then kind of gets you in the mindset of thinking, oh, he's in his prime health now. Now he's going to kick butt, which he can. Uh, but he's taken over Jabba the Hutt's palace. We saw Bib Fortuna take over the palace after Jabba was killed. And Bib Fortuna had put on a bunch of weight, uh, obviously having a very slovenly life of just people giving you things all the time and you running a crime lord syndicate apparently allows you to eat really well. So <laughs> maybe we'll see a fat boba. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess no on that. I'm going to guess but... no as well, but... But it does, it does, it, it does conjure up a very funny image of like a Star Wars fan, maybe me in a Boba Fett outfit with my with my armor sticking out of my belly. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm Boba Fett. No, you're not. You're Boba Fat. <laughs> <laughs> that one wrote itself. I know that was that was very uh, fluid. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so Boba Fett, you know, comes in there. He kills Bib Fortuna, takes over the the palace, and then is now the crime syndicate leader of Tatooine and making his rounds with his sidekick, uh, Fennec Shand. She's like, you know, maybe you should have these people carry you. Maybe, 
you know, you should have like a procession and, and let them know that you're in charge. He's like, no, this is going to be different. I'm going to, I prefer to walk. I'm going to, which right away makes him a target because right. everybody expects the bad guy to be paraded around and, and to be, you know, waving everybody. Hey, what's up? I'm the bad guy. I'm, hey, I'm the head guy. Um, and I like the fact that he's got the two green, whatever they are. Grimorians. What are they? I think the Grimorians, I think they're called. Okay. So they're, they have the tusks. They, I guarantee you they're like MMA fighters who's retired and stuff. And I was like, what a good role for these dudes. Cause they get to kick butt, you know, and right away we get to see some of that, which is really exciting, but they take them to a palace of what looks like a palace of pleasure. And Jennifer Beals is running the thing, uh, with a, as a Twilic when she's got her, her, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that, that was kind of, that was kind of nice. She walked in and I was like, <sighs> Flash dance? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, is that? And my wife goes, that's, that's, that's Jessica Beale. I was like, I know, right? I was like, holy cow, okay. She goes, she looks good. I was like, I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, so they don't waste any talent. You're not going to have an actor like her on the screen unless she's going to be in more episodes. Just oh, like, yeah, without She'll, 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 she'll be a factor in the show. Yeah. Just like the dude that come in to pay homage from the mayor and he's doing the yeah. blessings. Many. Okay. He talked way too much to just be a sideline character. They're going to have him in there somewhere. He's probably going to die. Um, it's, it'll be really awful uh, and funny. I'm sure. So. I don't think it'll be awful. He's, he's, he's a sleazeball. He kind of reminds me of that whole uh, um, Dana Car not Dana Carvey, uh, David Spade character in um, Coneheads. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. Well, if you laughs. Yeah. One respects you. You don't get the respect you deserve. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he's a sleaze ball. He's probably going to get a flamethrower to the face, um, or even better, maybe knee cannons to the to yeah, the abdomen. Yeah, I was going to say, a knee yeah. cannon. Yeah, or he might just go ahead and bend over and give him the rocket. <laughs> 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 so, um. So we got some things that are coming up. We got some uh, conflict. We got some characters that are already going to be invested in. Um, I watched the show twice because I got off of work. I had to go to work super early that day, and then I got off work super early. So I was like, I get to watch this uninterrupted. And I turned it on and watched it. And then when Dolores came home, she goes, so we, we watched it in Bug Puppet? And I was like, I did. And she goes, well, can I watch it? And I went, of course. I did this on purpose so I could watch it the second time and answer your questions. <laughs> <laughs> Which I recommend any Star Wars fan doing. If your wife is not a fully invested Star Wars fan, watch it alone and then watch it with her so that you can talk about it and explain the thing. She's like, I don't get it. What's this? You can pause it and it's not going to piss you off. You just go, okay, this part is where. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a wonderful idea, actually. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Because the first time you watch it, you've got to be involved. Like you've yeah. got to see everything, yeah. no, no characters. But yeah, you're absolutely correct. If you have someone in your life that is not a super fan or even just a fan in general. Yep. They're just watching it because it's going to be the thing that you want to talk about or that people at work might be want to talk about. So they want to be a current on it. Then yeah, definitely watch it by yourself and then do your thing and watch it with them. So the and one that, thing I was going to say, the one thing that, that they didn't do that Mandalorian did is they didn't introduce a cute character. Yeah, but see, the Mandalorian was trying to find a new new audience. I know, it was done. It's it's done for a reason. Um, was it Rodriguez did a few of these episodes where right. it's like Rich supposed Rodriguez. to be Rich Rodriguez did a few episodes where it's supposed to be darker and richer and more sinister. Uh, well, did, which I, is, I, I, was talk, I was actually talking to a friend of mine last night, and I didn't pay attention to whoever directed whatever. But apparently, Rodriguez was the one who um, directed the episode where the where the uh, the child was kidnapped and they blew yeah. up um, the razor. So I mean, like you know, a little bit more you know darker, like you said. So I mean, but I mean, that's Rodriguez. I mean, this this first episode was uh, was John Favreau, and Favreau is a storyteller. Favreau wants to give you the information, move the story along. Okay, here we're gonna we're gonna introduce you. We're gonna give you some stuff you need to know, and let's go. I mean, that's kind of what he did with Iron Man, and this is no different. I mean, he did the first episode of The Mandalorian. He introduced you. Here we go. Here's everybody. Launching point. Do it. So I'm interested to see because there is a roundtable of really good directors that he's hired 
to to help out with all these things. And I'm interested to see what each one of them brings to the table for each episode, because the way this is filmed, they have to do it in segments like they did the Mandalorian where different teams take over different projects. That way you don't get crossed up in, in what you're doing and distracted by your own version of storytelling. You give everybody a little bit of something from them. And we've seen from the Mandalorian, how good that works. So I think this is going to be really fun. Um, I think that the series is going to reveal a lot more of what a real badass that Boba Fett is and also Fennec Shand. I mean, people forget she's a master assassin. I mean, we saw a good bit of that from the animated series, yeah, um, the, clone, the clone, clone Wars. Wars. Yeah, uh, especially the final season. I mean, she was uh, uh, tough, tough. I mean, you can't be an assassin and take on Jedi's and not be someone to contend with. Exactly. So, very cool. Um, I wanted to ask: Have you seen the new Matrix movie? Okay, so I knew you were going to ask that, and I was trying to get to it before that, but no, I have not had a chance. I might, okay, my so let's. Intention- my intentions were to try to see it tonight or tomorrow. Let's pick up on that a different time because I want to talk to you about it. Um, because I've I want heard to... mixed, I've heard some really mixed reviews. It's got, you know, but I mean, I don't care. Obviously my, my opinion is the only one that really matters to me, but right. I've had, a, I've had a few friends here and there say that they thought that it was like basically just, you know, thrown together and it didn't make any sense. And I've had some just say the movie was done really well. It's phenomenal. It, it really brings everything together. So I'm, I'm excited to watch it, but I have not seen it yet. Yeah. So I, I had conflicting viewpoints within the first day of watching it. After I got to watch it the first time, I was like, oh, that was okay. That was okay. I like how they did this. I like how they did that. And the more I thought about it as the days went on, I kept going, that's actually, that's actually a really smart idea, the way they did this, and the way they did that, and then this, this character move and that character move. And, and then... A week later, I'm like, that was really good. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> the more I think about it, the more I'm like, that was really intelligent the way they did that. that. That was a genius idea. And I was like, holy crap. I mean, the fact that they were able to pull that off, holy crap. Like, I, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, that was genius. That was a genius movie idea. And the way they did it was really smart. Um, so, yeah, I, well, I don't know if they're excited to see it but yeah so we'll we'll, we'll 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 table that one until the next time we do one of these and i don't know if they're gonna do multiple or if this is just a one-off and they're done um i had thought that they were gonna do three but i could be wrong i don't know i i i again i, I reserve my answer until i see the movie and realize if it needs more or if it really just kind of finishes the story in my opinion yeah i mean Nowadays, I mean, they're always looking to make a make a sequel or, or or a trilogy or whatever. So, I mean, you know, every movie basically is set to be go to the next one because I mean, yeah. Well, Mar- Marvel and and John changed everything. Well, not only that, but the movie studios realized that you, even if you have a big successful first movie, you don't make your money until the sequels. Because you've already got the sets, you've already got the design, you've already got the 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 outfits. All that stuff takes a lot of time and money. And once you already have that, the sequel is way cheaper to make. And yeah, I never, I never, I never, they never even thought about it in that concept, but that absolutely makes so much sense. I heard Kevin Smith talk about that on Joe Rogan's podcast whenever he was on one of the first times. He was talking about how he'd made Clerks 2 and Clerks 3. And he was like, you know, we already had an idea that all the legwork was done. And he was like, it was just a matter of, okay, let's plug it back in. Let's go. And he talked about doing sequels of other things. And he said, you know, the, the whole sequel process is really where the money's made. And of course, I'm sure being a director, he gets to make friends with other directors and other movie makers. And they all share inside secrets, just like anybody would, right? Right. Especially Kevin. Oh. I mean, he's just, he's just a lovable guy. I mean, yeah. he's just, yeah, yeah. he's Silent Bob. He's Silent Bob. Um, okay, so... I listened to a really good podcast that I kind of want to mention. Um, Tony Hawk, pro skater, Tony Hawk, the inventor of the 900. Uh, I don't even know how to describe him to people who don't know who Tony Hawk is, but if you don't know who Tony Hawk is, you must live under a rock or possibly under 21 years old or you're under 21 years old. And you're like, I think I heard my dad say he played his video game once. Um, So Tony Hawk was on the Burt cast. Uh, Bert Kreischer and really good interview. 
Uh, he came on with Jason Ellis. Jason Ellis is also a skater. Jason Ellis also is an MMA fighter. And Tony and Jason have a podcast together. Um, it's It was interesting to hear them promote it and talk about it and stuff like that. But Bert asked a lot of really good questions where you get to find out that while Tony Hawk was on the cover of all these magazines and stuff like that and winning championships and stuff, he was almost homeless. Like he was losing everything because skating didn't pay. And he said it really wasn't until the X games that money turned around, which I mean, the X games didn't happen until the late nineties. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was late on late, way later. And you know, when Activision got in touch with him and built the first video game, he kind of felt like it was going to be something big and they sort of felt that too, but they came to him and they said, listen, you know, we'd, we'd really like to, to have the rights to the name Tony Hawk on this video game platform thing, because we, you know, we feel like it'd be a good investment. And they offered him, he said about half a million dollars. And he said, he said, he said, let me, let me go home and think about it. And he said, honestly, I had just won a big endorsement deal and I'd won something at the X games. And had I not had money right then, I probably would have taken the 500,000 and walked away and regretted it. He says, but because I was okay, because I wasn't worried about being homeless at the time, I was like, I think I want to keep the contract we signed first, which was for like a percentage of all sales having to do with the video game. And of course it ended up, he said it ended up being the smartest decision I ever made. So Bert right away is like, so how much money did you make off of it? <laughs> oh, of course, Bert. <laughs> and and of course, Jason's his buddy, and Jason's giving a hard time. He goes, "You can Google it," and he's like, "Colston, Google it." Like 140 million dollars he's worth. And Tony's like, he goes, "Yeah, yeah." He goes, but still, even though that says that on paper, like I'm broke. He goes, "I am really." He said, "I'm doing a podcast because I'm broke." He goes, "That money's invested in things." He says, "I got six kids. I got kids in college." He goes. That's a really, really expensive venture. He goes, but not only that, he got, he said, I got a lot of, I got a lot of things tied up in things with family that, that I don't have my hands on. He goes, it's, it's literally, I'm broke. He said, I'm, he said, I've got a Tesla. Okay. He goes, that's an expense, but he goes, I got a watch that's $30. I wear shoes that I got at the, at the mall. <laughs> he said, I'm wearing Levi jeans. He goes, it's just, you know, he's like, it, it may say I'm worth a hundred more. He goes, but I'm no, no. He goes, but I, I, I can say that I'm in a position to not have to work. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's pretty good. I like that. So that was kind of a clever way for him to say that and, and steal low key ball on the side and say, I'm, I'm pretty good. But he talks right. about, he Listen, talks he, a lot about, not... go ahead. I'm sorry. He, he talks a lot about how the interest in skating just goes up and down and up and down. And it's never the same. And, you know, it is one of those businesses where it's hard to sell to people for advertising time. And, you know, he gets little pushes here and there, but obviously the video games is what made him the most money. Sorry. Mr. Bentley wants to be in the video. He wants to be on the podcast, little guy, <laughs> but yeah. So I recommend checking that out. That's a, that's a really interesting podcast. Um, so, I mean, well, this is, this is the stuff I heard podcast. I got to talk about that kind of stuff, you know? Sure. And, yeah. and, and I, and I heard from you, I do believe that Florence is actually kind of bringing back the whole skating thing. They're trying to build, trying to build yeah. a skate park here in Myrtle Beach. Now, I'm sure probably pretty similar to what Myrtle Beach, I mean, what Florence has been doing. Yeah. Eddie Bacon was a big push in that. Um, he had a lot of activity trying to make sure that they built a proper skate park. And he's sort of become the unofficial mayor of the skate park. He goes down there all the time and, and gets on to young kids when they're doing something they're not supposed to or if somebody tries to vandalize it, he's quick to be like, Hey, you knock that off right now. Go clean that up. I mean, he, he's on top of it. He wants to keep the park there for kids to learn to skate and to be safe and have an environment in which they can skate together as friends. Um, but he's down there all the time. He invested in this, um, Insta 360 camera and him and yeah, his I buddies are down there filming all the time. Yeah, and well, did I did. I got it and I played with it and I'm not nearly as good as he is. Uh, the videos and the pictures that he's putting up on Facebook and Instagram are incredible. I mean, it's really good. Bacon skate, check it out. Bacon SK number eight, uh, on Instagram. It's very cool. Um, but you know, talking about stuff I heard, um, I heard that a friend of mine started a YouTube channel called, uh, the chubby Jedi, uh, or is, it, <laughs> is it the chubby Jedi or just chubby Jedi? Uh, it, it, it's, it's the chubby Jedi, the chubby Jedi. And weirdly enough, nobody had that name used. So 
That was pretty cool. I like that. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it either. Yep. So that means uh, even though in your video you say you're going to get in shape, you can't really get in shape because then you're not going to be the chubby. Well, I guess it could be like Greg being called the fat boy. I mean, I did. I, I did state in the in the opening video that I would just be a Jedi, but nonetheless, I started off as a chubby Jedi. So inside of me will always be a chubby Jedi, even if yeah. I get nice and in shape and whatever. I'll still be the chubby Jedi. That's fine. It, listen, it could it could still be the the thing later. Forget about the name. Like I told Greg about that when he had his podcast. Uh, he started off as right, the five and forty podcast, and then first of the year he goes, you know what? whatever the name is what it is i'm going to do cryptocurrency talk and he goes this is the crypto files episode one and i was like yeah. and, it was, and it was fantastic yeah. it was uh, listen so informative I've, I've i've actually talked with him a couple times since then about a couple different things um you know I'm, I'm i'm not i'm not super you know invested but i am looking into trying to make some moves that way yep so he, caught, he and i talked uh he and I talked Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. Or Friday. I don't know. We talked on the phone either Saturday or Friday. And he was telling me about what he's learning right now. And he said, literally, I get off of work and I come home and I do six hours of research every single day. And he goes, I haven't even played Animal Crossing or Zelda. <laughs> well, I know you've gotten away from Animal Crossing as, as your last one of the podcasts, yeah. podcast, but you've moved over to uh, the Zelda. Breath of the Wild. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I've I've defeated all four bosses, mini bosses, to get to the big boss, and I don't want to def- I don't want to end it, so I'm just walking <laughs> around. And they had a a content thing that you could download for additional content, and I downloaded it because it was on sale. I think around Christmas time they had it on sale for like forty percent off or something like that, and I was like, done, son. So I downloaded it. And I'm just walking around and just enjoying how beautiful the game is and how in depth it is, and. I keep finding areas where I'm like, I never saw this before. Where was this? And thinking that I've uncovered that part or seen that part before, I keep uncovering new things or new puzzles or new, you know, shrines that are locked in ways that you have to solve things outside of a mountain or underwater or something. And all of a sudden it opens up and there's a shrine and you're like, a new puzzle. Cool. That's that's the beauty of open world gaming. I mean, I remember the first first time I played, um, what was it called? Elder Scrolls. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I, up to that point, you'd always had to follow a certain guideline, you know, go here, do this quest, beat this boss and then move forward and move on or whatever the case may be. But Elder Scrolls was for me was one of my first open platform games like that. And it was just amazing. You could just do whatever you want, go anywhere you wanted. Um, well, actually, step back. The first original open world gaming that I remember is Final Fantasy VII. But there was just so many things you wanted to do yeah. that, you know. There was at that point we had the we had the you know the game guide. I remember that book sitting there on the. Uh, oh yeah. The t- so I mean yeah. we 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 kind it was, of followed. It was bigger than my notebook. I mean it was giant. <laughs> and so we kind of followed. We kind of we we kind of used that and followed a guideline to get to where we wanted because it, ultimately everybody wanted to cast Knights of the Round. Speaking of which, my notes are are they look like a crazy person. I mean. I'm, I'm, ta- I'm taking notes like crazy now because I've so many times gone, you know, an actor so and so, and I'm like, what was the actor's name? Crap! And you just you blank out because you're trying to think of all the things you're supposed to say, and you, what was that thing I was supposed to talk about? Ah! And and I hate that frustration feeling, so I try to write stuff down, and uh, yeah, so it's kind it's yeah. No, I mean, at this point, if it works out great, I mean, I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, the podcast where you and uh, Dolores were talking, she told you, you know, take better notes. Yeah. Well, she said that over the years, uh, often. Um, she's my biggest cheerleader and uh, my biggest critic as well. Because, I mean, as fully invested as I am, uh, I think she's realized that the best way to be in this situation is just to jump in also with both feet and go, all right, if you're doing it, let's do it. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of what she's allowed me to do. Well, I, I, as I look I, around this room, I'm I've like, always, huh. I've always, I've always appreciated the relationship that y'all have like that, but even more so now, I really just am so proud and happy that you were able to find someone that, compliments you so well yeah well what was it oprah winfrey one time said uh she said that she'd heard people say um 
oh, he completes me. Oh, she completes me. And she says, I think the goal is not to complete someone, but to compliment someone. You want to find someone who challenges you and someone who, you know, raises your level of everything you do. And there's a lot of truth to that. But it's also true that, I mean, does she have a successful relationship? Is there, <laughs> is there a guy? <laughs> I just heard a podcast from a, from a pastor say, something about i love oprah but let's face it oprah gives relationship advice and apparently is terrible at relationships <laughs> and he's like i don't i don't know maybe she's not the best person to follow but if she put out a book all the women would be like oh we gotta buy this it's gotta be the best information and he goes yeah okay sure right hmm. but is it <laughs> um he's he did a podcast uh and i want to share it i gotta look up the name real quick because i didn't think about talking about this um I listened to it with my wife on the way down to Georgia. It's the second chance church podcast. And the episode is called the silent scream of men. Really good episode. Really good episode. Um, talks about how a lot of guys don't want to talk about what they're going through. Um, they want to be able to figure things out. They want to have the answers. A lot of times they're mulling over information. Um, talks about how we all struggle with three main things in life. Uh, the biggest question that men have for themselves all the time is, is am I man enough? Like that's the sort of the question we all ask ourselves all the time is, is do I measure up? You know, am I doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing? Do I, am, I, am I the, am I the man enough to figure out things am i man enough to be the husband am i man enough to do to be the the dad am i am i doing all the things i'm supposed to be doing and each step of these questions i was going yeah there's a lot of truth to that um one of the things he talked about was um you know why why do we shut down so often or you know you hear people say oh he never opens up to me he's never talking to me blah blah blah, blah. he goes that means because he don't trust you I was like, ooh, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because guys are real quick to measure each other up and say, do I trust you enough to give you information? Do I trust you enough to possibly hurt me? Do I trust you enough to, to be on my side? And often that answer is no. And I thought, you know, we turned, the, we turned the podcast off when it was done. And I said, let's talk about it. She goes, okay, let's talk about it. I said, in there, he talks about at the end of your life, you hope that you at least have five good guy friends that you can be a hundred percent honest with all the time and there's no judgment and there you get to move forward and you get to have each other's back. And he goes, and if you lived it, you know, if you have that in your life, then you've lived a really good life. And I was like, I feel like I've got that and more. And she was like, who? And right away I started lifting off names and she goes, yep. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Well, she goes, how do you have that many? And I was like, ah, I don't know. I said, honestly, I think you, you give of yourself to certain people and you test the waters. And like you talked about not trusting people, you trust people with little things to start with and see if they can keep a secret. You see if they can look past your flaws. I said, and I'm pretty quick to just point out flaws and be like, yeah, I do a lot of this stuff wrong. Here's, here's a list. <laughs> and, yeah. you, and you go from there. And I guess because of my job, I meet people all the time. So I'm forced to kind of like your job where you're constantly, you know, inundated with people coming up. It's a lot of people that you're like, do I trust you with information or do I care? Or maybe talking to you helps me get through my own thing. You know, uh, I made a comment to her. I said, this podcast helps me with my own thing. This, to me, this is sort of my own therapy, being able to talk about some crap that's going on in my life and how maybe some of this stuff in TV shows or, or podcasts or things that I listen to or, you know, whatever sparks a thought. And that helps me work out some crap in my own brain. Maybe just saying it out loud helps me move past it and gives everybody else part of my truth. And so when people talk to me, they don't, they don't think I'm holding any secrets because I'm not, I got nothing. I got no secrets, you know? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, so I have had people come up to me and, and tell me things and be like, listen, don't mention this to anybody. Okay, fine. But then I know that they're testing with me. And if I pass that test, then maybe they'll be the same with me. So I don't know. I, I think that for years, um, a lot of men try to manipulate one another. They try to take advantage of one another. And for whatever reason, 
I've gotten a good core group of people around me and made a circle of people of friends um, that, you know, we have each other's back and we oversee each other's flaws and we want nothing but the best for each other. And we hope to promote the positive no matter what. And, you know, even if things fall apart, you're like, you're right. You need some help. You want to hug, <laughs> you know, and I, I just, even when things are really bad, I just feel so lucky. So that's one of the things I try to think about all the time is when I feel like my life is falling apart, I just close my eyes and go, thank you, God, for allowing me to have so many blessings. And even through this, I, I know it'll get better. And I just got to get through this. I got to figure it out. I got to, maybe I got to talk to more people. Maybe I got to say, hey, I need help, which is a hard thing for guys to do is to say, hey, I need help. I had a conversation this past weekend with a guy who was, you know, out of the military, got some really bad PTSD issues. And I started talking to him about, you know, it's okay to ask for help. Like we all need to talk to somebody once in a while. And it sort of blown me off. And I said, listen, this is some situations I'm going through. And I said, and, and I don't, I know that it's not enough that I can carry, but if I talk about it with other people, it's easier. And he's like, yeah, I know I'll get there. So, I mean, everybody has to do it within their own time and their own way. And, you know, well, that's, that's kind of where the, uh, the, the birth of the chubby Jedi kind of came from. I mean, you know, as I work, I work a lot of late nights. And so when I get home, there's not a lot of people up. Right. And I've got things in my head that are just won't get out of my head. Mm -hmm. So instead of it just sitting there and keeping me, you know, awake or going crazy or whatever, I'm just going to speak it. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. And honestly, the more you do it, the, it doesn't have to be long. It could be five minutes. It could be 10 minutes, just something be like, listen, this went on today. I have, I feel a certain way about it. This is what, this is how it relates to me. This is how I think it relates to other people. And then I always try to think about the fact of if I'm doing a positive message and I'm trying to help somebody, then maybe it also helps me. It's sort of like, if it's raining on you and you're working outside and you're going, listen, it's not going to rain all day. And, or if it does tomorrow, it'll be fine. And if you say that enough times, you convince yourself that you can get through it and it maybe it helps somebody else. And if, right. and if and I, I feel like if I help somebody else, it helps me. Right. And that's, and that's kind of where I, that's kind of where I went like with this quick video. I was like, you know, in this, get, get out of this, you yeah. know, that, that's my, that was my main goal. But I start. What I did is I started recording myself just talking to the phone, just trying to get the stuff out of my head that I was having conversations in my head. Which you know, I'm sure some people say it's makes you sound crazy, but no, I mean, I, I no. I, it's, but you, when when you have those things in your head and you can't get them out, they sit there and they just roll around and it 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 it, it, it basically takes over everything. Yeah. And well, so, and it's it's your subconscious trying to solve problems. So, I, so yeah, so basically it came down to this is I've been sitting in this for a few months now and I'm going crazy and I've allowed myself to basically become slightly depressed and it's just not what I want. Yeah. I don't want that anymore. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's, and so I feel like if I can't talk to someone, at least I can talk to myself. Yeah. And then in the process, who knows what's going through, whatever they're going through and maybe somehow I can help someone else. And if I can help someone else by helping myself as well, then that's just a win-win. Right. Yeah. That, that, that was where the kind of the, the, the birth of the chubby Jedi came from. Yeah. Well, and, and try to picture, I don't know, for me, try to picture uh, you're sitting now as an older man, somebody who's been through a lot of crap. People say, oh, you seem really wise. You know, I've just, I've gotten banged yeah, up along on. the way. <laughs> yeah. I've gotten, yeah. I've made a lot of mistakes and here's what I learned from that mistake. Like that's one of the first things I talk about is yeah. I've, I, when I teach new people at work, I'm like, okay, so if you do this, this happens, trust me, I know. Cause I've had this mistake happen. And like, how are you still here? You've done all this stuff. I'm like, we all make mistakes. We all have bumps and bruises along the way. The important part is just like captain America, you get back up. You don't quit getting back up. So that's the motivation. That's, that's the idea. Don't let things defeat you in life. You know, you got friends around you, you got family, you, you constantly reach out. Even if it's strangers, you say, Hey, listen, man, I'm going through some stuff, you know, 
my dad talked about that. I had him on the podcast one time and he said, I said, how you doing? He goes, you're supposed to say, okay, right? Like, that's what you're supposed to say. He goes, but I mean, honestly, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> He's like, I'm not okay. You, you, you oftentimes speak, I'm not okay. Speak your truths. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's therapeutic to speak yeah. your truths. Yep. It really and is. you may be, this is sort of Celestine prophecy wise, but <clears throat> When you tell somebody what you're going through, sometimes it means that you're destined to talk to them about it anyway, because it may help them. And you may actually end up helping each other in the process. If you feel the urge to tell somebody something, trust that instinct and go forward with it, because it may develop into something that enriches your life even more. So, you know, I know that religious wise, you're, you're, you're supposed to say God has a plan. Okay, that's true. Um, you know, socially wise, you're supposed to say everything happens for a reason. That's true as well. Um, but you don't know it when you're going through it. Like if you're on a boat in a storm, you're like, why is this happening? Well, when you come through the other side of that storm, you're like, okay, I learned some things through that storm. I learned what, what's going to save my life. I learned what I'm willing to do. I'm learning what I can do. I'm learning what I'm, what I'm willing to endure. I'm learning what I can go through. And from the other side of it, you get stronger and you get more confident. You know more about yourself and you know more about your surroundings and it helps you be a better version of yourself. You know, when I, when I got divorced the first time, I really beat myself up a lot. And I knew that a lot of it was because just she and I just weren't meant to be together, but I noticed flaws within my own thinking that I thought there's a better way to do this. And I don't have the tools. And luckily there's people out there that make a lot of self-help books. And I, I bought and read a lot of the self-help books and they were pretty informative. Um, but it was all basically just, you know, start small and, and work bigger. Um, you know, was it Jordan Peterson starts off saying, make your bed every day. Like he's telling kids, make your bed every day. If you make your bed every day. You got a pattern, you got a process, you got a thing makes you get out of bed, makes you have a, you, you can take pride in that one thing and then let you build on something else. So maybe today you make your bed, maybe tomorrow you, you know, get in the kitchen and clean up the dishes. Maybe, <laughs> maybe just having a routine helps you get out of your funk. Um, during COVID, a lot of people were trapped indoors and it was the routine of some people saying, I just needed to go for a walk just for mental health. Just go for a walk. That routine of saying, all right, it's time. I'm going to do my walk. My stepdad does that every day. He, when he gets home, well, when mom gets home around, around five ish, he takes the dogs for a walk. They have a yard they run around in all day long. The walk is not for them. The walk is for him. Him going on a walk and walking the dogs is a reason and a purpose. And it lets him clear his head. And oftentimes he'll call me. He's like, Hey, I'm out walking the dogs. I'm like, okay, cool. He goes, what's going on? I'm like, <laughs> just getting off work, you know, <laughs> but it's, it's that routine of, of knowing this is the thing I'm going to do today. This is that, this is that time stamp of my day of let's get it done. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, I'm in the process of creating that as well. Uh, I've yeah. got a, uh, I currently have uh, two weeks, well, two and a half weeks off of work. Uh, the mm -hmm. restaurant is closed. So the owner goes on vacation. So I've got a couple trips planned obviously culminating in the great trip that we have planned to Charlotte to see Mr. Tom Segura. Yes. Very excited about, but I've got, I've got, because he's other... coming everywhere. He's coming everywhere. That's the name <laughs> of the tour. I'm coming everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so that is, that, that, that's like the, that's like the end of my vacation, but I've got a couple of trips planned, but uh, I've decided, I've decided that uh, to try to get to that motivation point, Mm -hmm. And once I get back, I'm going to kind of start doing a routine kind of thing. And I'm going to get up in the morning. I mean, I live right now. I live approximately 10 minutes at best from the beach. Mm. And so I'm going to try and get up every morning, say around nine ish or whatever, and take Mr. Bentley here for a walk on the beach every morning. Yeah. You know, give him, give him some, some, some outside air and also create a pattern for myself mm -hmm. of the start of my day. Yep. That's um, good. That's kind of, that kind of goes in line with what you're talking about. Plus you're on the East coast. So you get to watch the sunrise. Oh, uh, not at night, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I could try, I could try to get up at six o'clock and do it and maybe get a sunrise one or two times a you know, week, but for the most part, because I work so late, I'm usually not up until at least nine. You know, 
I noticed one of the weird things about me is um, when it's summertime, I really like to get my feet tan. I know it sounds weird, but because I wear, you know, steel toe boots all the time working, my feet can get pale. And for some reason, if I spend enough time out and about and I get a tan on my feet, not a burn, but a tan, then I know that I've, I just feel better because I know that I've been outside and I've, and I've absorbed the sun a little bit in my feet. And I don't know what it is about your feet, but you know, that element of it makes me just feel better. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's finding a routine, getting into a pattern, enjoying your environment, going for a walk, you know, fresh air, all that good stuff, all the stuff you're supposed to have without this computer lifestyle of being stuck inside and all that stuff. It's, it is important. And a lot of kids need to hear that right now. I mean, I saw one of my nephews this past weekend and he was like, he was like really, really, really thin. And I was like, Blake, what are you doing? And he's like, just working and playing my PS5. And I was like, when was the last time you went outside and did stuff? He's like, 18, <laughs> 17, 18. He's like, I just do this. And I was like, you need to get outside more. He's like, eh, do I? <laughs> And I mean, especially with the uh, the expansions of the metaverses coming, I mean, it, it's yeah. it, going outside is going to be something that's going to be a, a privilege. I mean, so it, it's, here's a thought. OK, not to change the subject really drastically, but you just sparked an idea in my brain. Oh, uh, you had an alien. Yeah. Yeah. An alien thought. Um, so I'm listening to Joe Rogan right now. Interview Suzanne Santos. One of my she's one of my favorite folk American musicians. Um, she, she made a comment that she got engaged this past year and she said, I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't planning on it. She said, it just, I met him and he's the guy. And she's like, it's weird because, you know, as a woman being in a mostly male environment all the time, being a musician, constantly surrounded by men, like, I'm always feeling like I have to be the, the man also, because I'm trying to make sure I'm not in harm's way. And I'm not put in situations where someone could take advantage of me or hurt me. And, and she's like, you know, but the reality is, is, is in this day and age, she goes, honestly, most of the men I meet are betas. And she goes, I know there's a, there's a need for those guys. She goes, but I don't have a need for those guys. And I was like, Ooh, somebody just spoke some truth. Cause, cause there is a truth in that. I mean, I know that there's people that I work with that are a lot of alphas. And people are amazed that that a bunch of alphas can get along and accomplish things together. And <clears throat> to me, it's all about communication and proper communication and learning how to talk to one another properly. And they do that. But we have a few betas that honestly don't get any respect. Because, <laughs> I mean, listen, there's a need for some people to just always take a back seat and go along with the flow and all that stuff. And, you know... I would imagine that if I was a woman, I don't know that that would be really exciting. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying out loud, there's a lot of truth to what she said. Um, you kind of want to know that when the pirates come, you're going to be defended. Or <laughs> if the toilet breaks, you can go, honey, <laughs> the toilet broke. I mean, when I got married, I never knew that I was one day going to have to know elect electrical work and plumbing and be the IT guy and <laughs> know how to cook and <laughs> clean and, you know, constant questions of things I have no idea how to do going, all right, let's figure it out. <laughs> Here, here's your job. Like, okay. But, you know, a lot of young, young guys right now, I think are growing up in this really coddled society of, your feelings constantly being disgusted, which is, listen, I know I, I talk all the time about how guys need to talk more about their feelings, but I think I'm talking more to guys like me or guys who have, you know, been through some crap and sort of feel like they need to shut the, shut the walls around them and not speak to anyone and not show any vulnerability. Those are the people I'm talking about need to get help. The people who constantly, yeah. My, I got this thing going on with my cat and it's just, it's breaking my heart. You're like, shut up. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, I don't know. There's a balance to life. I'm, 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 I, I guess I'm, to be perfectly honest, I'm kind of caught in the middle of that. You know, I've, I've got, I've got alpha tendencies, but I've also, I was raised by all women. So I'm very in touch with my 
emotional side of me. Yeah. Uh, sometimes a little too much, but nonetheless, I don't try to make it a detriment to my personality or character. Well, when my wife uh, has had surgery in the past, they've given her painkillers, you know, to, to, to put her under and she gets very weepy whenever she, she gets, you know, in that state. Um, I've been around you when you've been really drunk and, <laughs> and you're like, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to get so drunk. And you're like apologizing immediately. Like, it's okay, man. We're all drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I'm drunk, you guys are way drunk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if we started drinking together and I'm drunk, then you guys are way drunk. We were we were just discussing the fact that when we went to go see Joey Diaz, I remember going to the bar and I remember going uh, to the show. I don't remember the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the show. I remember I had a good time. I don't remember the show. It was a great re- show, but I don't remember I the remember, show. I remember most of the show. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Going to Black Crows. I remember going to the Black Crows and I and and I didn't drink much because I was driving. I had like a beer. Um, but <clears throat> at a certain point, you the next day you were like, was the show good? <laughs> you're like, I, mean, I, I don't I remember, remember a certain part of it. <laughs> I remember them coming on stage. Yeah. And I remember the last song, obviously, because they were gonna play the last song. But in the middle of that, yeah, there were there were there were some there were some memories that were lost. I remember I was sitting next to you and you're like, where did Josh go? And you went, you were wandering off and Greg goes, he's right here, man. <laughs> and you were gone. Like, well, my, somebody go get him. <laughs> one, of, one of my, one of my favorite parts. And I think we talked about this on the podcast or maybe not, but uh, when I look back on my phone, it's like, you remember, you remember the end of contact? Yeah. When they said it wasn't that it was, you know, just 17 blank, minutes or, or 17, 17 hours minutes. or something like that. Yeah. I had like, 18 minutes of just blank. I think my phone was in my pocket recording. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's something. He did yeah. something last night. I, mean, I could hear the music, yeah. but it was just pitch black. Like I'm, I'm telling you, my phone was in my pocket. Yeah. And I was passed out and it just sat there for like eight, nine minutes of just blankness. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. But yeah. So, I mean, yes, there are elements of, of both in you. And I think there are in, in a lot of us, um, you know, obviously. Yeah, I mean, well, it very it varies on your percentages. I mean, like, you know, yeah, everybody has. It's, it's just like it's just like, um, you know, back when I was with with Chrissy, she would always say, I'm an asshole. I said, well, so am I. I said, everyone has it in them. Yeah. It's just what you let out of it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's true. And it's all choices. But listen, not to switch gears too swi- too swiftly, but. I got, really, I got a really cool gift that's I know it's kind of it's kind of dumb. This is not an advertisement, but it is it is kind of neat. It's Star Wars. I saw those. I saw those, but my problem was I was like, if I get those, I'm not gonna wash with them. I'm just gonna keep them. I'm gonna have to buy two. I have to buy two pants. Yeah. So listen, my wife went to this uh Christmas show thing and she she brought me home some little soaps. And I was like, "Oh, that's cool," because it's it's the it's a squash soap or whatever. Squatch, right. And I was like, "Oh, Doctor Squatch, cool. I've heard of that." And then I thought, "That's expensive soap." I mean, uh, I hope it's good soap. And I smelled yeah, it, like, and I was like, "Oh, this is nice." Bar. It's yeah. So I opened up a pack, and it was like a black bar of soap. It was like a, a brick, and I started using it. It had like an exfoliant in it, and I was like, "It smells great," but it's black. So like everything that it's on in the in the shower started looking black, and I was like, "It's char, it's charcoal, Ugh. yeah, it's charcoal," which I actually works. I bought one of those. It started bleeding everywhere, and like, yeah, I, yeah this isn't working. But it smells great. Like it actually yeah. takes the odor away really quickly. Um, was it uh, the the Dollar Shave Club? I got this gift thing of like ball wash, and it had charcoal in it, and it's black to start with, but you soap up with it, and it it's clear. Um, but anyway, so I got these, and I was like. Again, I was like, I don't, I don't want to use them. But she showed me. She goes, I got you, I got you these other bars, and I was like, okay. And then she showed me a, a box like this, and she goes, I got this for Jared. And I was like, for Jared, but I'm, I'm the Star Wars fan. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? Come on. But at Christmas, she goes, oh, I got you this, and I was like, oh, please let it be the soap. Please let it be the soap. And it was, it's got like a magnetic thing on the case here. So it flips, yeah. Which is nice. I mean, I know it's stupid, but I, I still no, like nice. it. And then when you open it up, oh, come on, open it up. 
It's got a cool display. Look at the display. Yeah, I, I like I said, I actually looked at that myself. I really did. I, 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 it's got the, I almost bought one, but I mean, I was like, I'm just that. It's just going to go in a pile of my Star Wars stuff that I would never touch, and it's just going to sit there. The yeah. blue one has got Obi Wan on it, and it says "Only Hope Only Soap." Hope soap. Yeah. It's so cool. It, it smells good. <laughs> I listen. They're not a. They're not an advertiser, but I still. This is so cool. Uh, the Yoda. It says. Wisdom wash. That's cool. Um, and if as you pick them up, there's pictures of their lightsabers inside. The oh, now that's that I didn't thing. see. That is awesome. And like Obi Wan says, Jedi Knight Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, Yoda's has got Jedi Master Yoda, Darth Vader, Sith Lord Darth Vader, and this is the Dark Side Scrub. This has got the charcoal in it, obviously. That's the charcoal, yeah. Yep. And then Darth Maul, it says Sith Warrior Darth Maul, Ruthless Rinse. Oh. And it's like a reddish, darkish color. But yeah, cool. And like you said, I don't know if I want to use them because they're so pretty. <laughs> That's what I said. Like, I, I, I wanted to buy them, but I was like, I have to buy two sets because I want to use it, yeah. but I don't waste the, you know, I want to, the, 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 the savability of it. Yeah. You know, just like you said, I mean, that, that it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a talk piece. Yeah, it's a talking piece. It looks cute, and it smells great. It really does smell great, even in the box. But anyway, so that, that's kind of a dorky thing. But um, Hey, if that's a know. dorky thing, so, uh, so am I. Don't worry about it, brother. Yeah, I'm, I'm total dorkish, so it's, it's all fine. Uh, I did get a new uh, Millennium Falcon shirt for my mom, because apparently she pays attention. Uh <laughs> But I remember telling my wife not long ago, I was like, I've got enough shirts. Like I really, I've, I've gone overboard this past year in shirts. And she also got me a, a long sleeve with the, 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 the Sith Lord. Um, what's the animated thing that we were watching? Our, um, is it legends? Oh, uh, uh, visions. Visions. Yes. Visions. visions. So it was, it was the chick from the first episode. Okay the the kurosawa jedi yeah. or samurai type thing she's on the front with a bunch of the japanese looking star wars characters behind her it's cool it's it's neat i was like oh that's kind of that's kind of dope <laughs> uh, on on that note i was real impressed with visions i mean it, it oh yeah it was it was it was it was star wars but it really wasn't like i mean they, they took it to a whole other level yeah and it was it was i was very impressed with the way they they did that yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. So, anywho, um, well, let's wrap this up for now. Uh, I do want to talk to you off camera, but uh, I just wanted to do this episode with you because I really, I knew that as much as we talked about Mandalorian, that the Book of Boba Fett needed to happen with me and you as well. So, well, absolutely. I mean, we, I'm it, glad it, we were able to do it. I'm happy to do it, and I'm glad we were able to get the time to do it. I know. You know, we've both kind of had different. You know, for a while there, when COVID was in, and you were and you were also hurt, we kind of did that. You know, weekly Monday, you know, podcast, and it worked out perfect because it was right around the time of Mandalorian and going into WandaVision. And since then, you know, a lot of things have changed. You went back to work. I had changed jobs. I had some lifestyle changes, but uh, I really am happy to be able to be back on the podcast. Um, yeah. and look forward to hopefully doing some more with you soon. Maybe in person. There's a possibility. <laughs> it, depends, it depends on it depends on your timing. It depends on your yeah. schedule. Yeah. Uh, Sundays Sundays are actually something that I know we are. My, my restaurant is closed on Sundays and Mondays every single week. Okay. Well, so, and you're not working next week. Well, I'm, well, I'm not working till the 18th. We go back to work. Okay. Now I am I, I I do have a trip planned to uh, Tennessee. Okay, uh, coming up here for a few days. I will be coming through Florence. Um, but when I'm coming back, maybe the only thing is I'm going to have Bentley with me. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things, you know. I have to make sure that he's you know got a little you know time and space. But otherwise, I also have a trip to Raleigh planned before we go to Charlotte. Okay. So, well, cool. Um, 
But we'll definitely we'll definitely find a way to get that done. Um, with the trip to Riley, I'm actually going to have to board him unless I find someone who will watch him for me in their house, like kind of dog sit. Yeah. But otherwise, I'll board him for about five days, and that way I could easily head down your way first, and then head up to Riley going up 95. Yeah. I mean, but it's also, little, it's a, I mean, you you honestly, from where you're at, it'd be better off for you to go. Just well, yeah, it would, it would be better off. But I mean, honestly, I, I've got the yeah. time. I've got. We'll talk about you it. Know, I, but yeah, we'll, get, we'll 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 discuss all of that. Yeah. But uh, if nothing, if nothing else, we'll maybe we'll do a podcast all together while we're in Charlotte. Hmm, that may be tough to do, but we'll figure it out. Well, I mean, record it. We could do it. Hey, we could do it in the vehicle on the way up. There you go. Yeah. We could do. We could. We could do that. Yeah, we could uh, because uh, yeah, my, 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 well, the, the thing is though, actually, I just thought about that. That's not going to work because I'm actually going to be meeting you guys in Charlotte. Okay. All now, right. I, now we can, now I could do a zoom. I could do a Zoom call over the phone. Yeah, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. I don't, know, I, don't the, I don't know the logistics of that one. So, but yeah, no, I, I my my intention, my original plan was to ride up with you guys and we'd all ride up together, but. Now that I have all this time off from work at the new job, I've decided to go see my friend Chris and his wife Jen uh, up in Raleigh, North Carolina, and then I'm going to meet you guys on Friday in Charlotte. Okay. Well, wrapping this up, um, I do want to talk about, uh, if anybody's listening right now, because I know a lot of people checked out, but if you're still here, we're over an hour or so. Um, Are we? Wow. Yeah, it's been an hour, 11 minutes. Uh, there is a band called Hairball that is going to be performing in Augusta March 5th. It's a Saturday. Um, my brother-in-law, Charles, or as many people call him Dakota uh, on Facebook, Dakota West, is promoting the event. They're, in, they're a, a big 80s hair metal type group. Uh, they do a lot of popular music in the 80s with the giant hair because they're called Hairball, right? And sure. if you YouTube them... There's a lot of videos online. I put stuff on Facebook that promotes them. Uh, they're very cool. There's like 20 members of the band. They do costume changes. It's a big vaudeville-like show, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I looked at tickets. <laughs> tickets are only about $20 or $30. They're not very expensive, and it should be a lot of fun. I'm thinking about going. i um, trying to get some people together to see if they want to go to, maybe my brother. Um, I didn't know if you'd be available because it's a Saturday night. It's kind of rough for you because that's one of your busier nights. But, you know, I figure I'd throw it out there. If anybody's listening who's interested in going, uh, get your tickets now because they're selling out very quickly. So just wanted to say, check out Hairball. Um, it's on the, um, that's on my, I'll, I'll put a link. I'll put a link in the thing. Um, I saw a link, yeah. Yeah, it's on Facebook. It's on, if you if you look up Hairball, if you look up the Miller Auditorium, in Augusta, um, or if you look up Hairball's tour, you can find tickets there. It's pretty easy. So, anyway, I just wanted to mention that before I get out of this thing. All right. Well, hey, if you happen to be in Charlotte on the on the fourteenth and at Ovens Auditorium, we're gonna have a blast. We're gonna have a blast. Tom Segura, I'm coming everywhere. He says, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right. I'm going to log off of this. Uh, if you're still listening, thanks for listening. We appreciate you. Check out the website. Uh, it's www.stuffiheard.com. You can find merch. You can find links to every episode, pictures, video, all that fun stuff is there. And as always, cue the cow. So I want you guys to give me more likes. Give me more likes.